and diaphragm. That's this is the right side of the carburetor. This thing here, this is the hose we're talking about. This is just this is the vacuum diaphragm pulls the choke open slightly when the engine starts, keeps it from running too rich. Also commonly known as a vacuum pull off. Okay, that's done. All right, remove choke diaphragm linkage and bracket assembly and place to one side to be cleaned as a separate item. Has a bold face note here, a liquid cleaner may damage the diaphragm material and the dash pot applies the dash pot. What that means is this has got a rubber diaphragm. Anything like this that has a rubber diaphragm in it that you're gonna to try to reuse. Um, you don't wanna put this in the, I've got one of those big buckets of cleaner. It's called Kim Tool. I think it comes in a gallon. Uh, that's why I soak them in, and you don't want to put those in it because it'll eat it up and ruin it. So, now what I always do is when I have one of these, I try to check these diaphragms uh, to check, make sure they're actually good. So what I do is I push it in with my finger and I hold my thumb over the other end. And as you can see, that one is holding. I let off of it, it comes back out. Push in, push down, let off. Good. It's perfect shape. So let's go ahead and remove this. All there is, looks like there's two screws holding it to the air horn. So let's take those off. You gotta kind of weasel your screwdriver in here, I see. <laughs> I don't know why I do this, but I always kind of don't always turn the screw all the way out before I try to take it out with my fingers. I don't know why that is. But I'm just goofy like that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and there's not a real good way to do this. So I'm going to try to. Wow, yeah, really. I think I can get out of here. Kind of. You have to be careful doing this. You have to slide your screwdriver kind of under this. And get it. I'm really kind of using for this actual step right here, I kind of could use a smaller screwdriver. What that was. But. Okay, there's that. There's you. And then there was you. Okay, and when you get to this point, uh, you just kind of have to finagle this little link out of here. Hope you saw that. Got too far over. I just kind of took it out right here. Right up here at the top, that's where it slides out of. It had to be you. All right, next step. Remove fast idle cam retaining screw and remove fast idle cam and linkage. Okay. Now, I almost think something's missing off this. I'm not sure yet. But this is the fast idle cam right here, this plastic piece linkage. Um, this has got a piece of wire connecting this. Somebody's lost the clip off of it, I guess. If you can see that. So that won't ever work. It'll have to be fixed. But basically the way this works is it's working halfway, but it's not proper. It's just gotta be in that slot. But when the choke closes when it's cold, it pulls the, the flap closed, the choke valve closed, and then that pulls up on this that pulls up on this rod right here, which in turn pulls this cam up, and this cam is got it's kind of had steps made into it. So this is the fast idle screw. This is the base idle screw. Um, so it doesn't look right to me, but that's the base idle screw. And this thing, when you crack the throttle open the first thing in the morning, it speeds it up. So as it opens, uh, the choke starts to open and gets warm. The choke heater warms up. It kind of rotates us down and then it gets to a lower, you know, that's how it kind of goes down in stages. Uh, I can get more into that theory if you'd like me to at some point. 
So this screw, this large screw, has to come out. I hope it does <coughs> easily. Whew. Well, it's in there. Let's try this one more time. I'm using my dollar screwdriver. I'm breaking it. Woo! Boy, did you see that? This dude was in there. I thought that was my screwdriver broke at first. Okay, now this is metal. This needs to be let's fix that. Hard for me to see if I'm in the frame here. This is screws metal. This can be soaked. Let's put it to the side. With this little plastic piece here, you need to be careful with these because these things are. Let's get that off there. Grief. This little plastic deal, these are about 35, 40 years old, most of them now. They don't need to be soaked. You have no reason to clean these except like with a cloth or something. Don't put it in the solution. Whatever you do. Alright, wow, okay. <laughs> Woo! Okay, remove air horn retaining screws and lift air horn straight up and away from the main body. Okay, that's... Okay, one... You can see me here. Okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six air horn retaining screws. I don't see any that are inside of it, like on a quarter jet or something. So, uh, these should be pretty easy to keep straight. There's two long ones that go all the way down at the rear, and then the other four just should be normal size. So just fasten these. Here's a, a note to tell you when you're fastening an air horn on the carburetor back down with these screws, you don't need to torque these like you're trying to uh, torque a wheel back down or something because that war ends up warping the air horn. If you put all this force on it, you just need to. Snug them down, you know, where they're nice and snug. Not, not. This is pot metal. It's not steel. So. Worst case scenario, you'll just end up stripping the screws out, the uh, screw threads out. camera set such a weird angle I have it up on my tripod but I figure well you can't see what I'm doing if it's down at normal level. Uh oh down at normal level so it's up on the table. Yeah somebody's been into this before I can tell you always see these screws with Somebody's, what that is, somebody's wailing on them a little bit. They're kind of got marks on it. And finally, the two at the rear. Oh, these are a little tight. They're going into this. The two at the rear go into the, ba the base plate, and I think that base plate is, I guess it's on them. I thought it might be steel, but I think it's aluminum. Yeah, that's aluminum. In the world, I get steel from. Huh. Okay, keep in mind these screws got little washers on them too, so I'm trying not to lose those. Mm. Oh, yeah, it would be kind of difficult. <sighs> if it's been apart, it's been a while since it's been apart. Now, I'll get, tell you something ahead of time. I always forget to get things when I'm at the parts store, but you can clean it as a carburetor cleaner or what I use is brake cleaner. It seems to work really good. Spraying the, spraying the internals out. Of course, now, I mean, that you need to soak it in solution, though. Soaking it in gas or you don't need to soak it in gas or 
kerosene or anything like that. You just need to get that chem, that gunk or that chem tool or something like that. I think it's called, some of it used to be called Berryman, I think so.